The recent issue within the Call of Duty community is the lack of content and maps within the launch of Call of Duty Cold War, which then makes me wonder, is the same issue going to happen with Halo Infinite? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, give you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. It really helps out the video and channel so more people get to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. But as someone who's a fan of the Call of Duty series, I've been watching some YouTube content talking about the launch of Call of Duty Cold War, which is going to come out, well, probably the day of the release of this video. And there have been big discussions about the amount of content that's going to be coming at launch for Call of Duty Cold War as saying that that's actually going to be less than what you would normally expect for a Call of Duty game. Which then also makes me think about what about Halo Infinite? Halo Infinite's been delayed, as I'm sure many of you know nowadays. And I feel like the developers of Call of Duty have kind of come across similar issues as 343 have. So I kind of wanted to go over the content that's actually going to be in Call of Duty Cold War and what it means for Halo Infinite moving forward compared to Halo 5's launch and what can we expect moving forward and past the launch of Halo Infinite. So let's look about what the Call of Duty community is complaining about when it comes to content within Cold War right here. So you can see that uh, this, move, this is from Charlie Intel, a very credible source when it comes to Call of Duty. Uh, they are getting, they're saying eight different maps when it comes to launch. You have the maps of Checkmate, Garrison, Miami, Cartel, Crossroads, Armada, Moscow, Satellite, Alpine, and Ruka, Ruka being the uh, large scale 40 player almost battle royale esque kind of game mode that they have coming for the game, which they haven't mentioned anything about the battle royale for Cold, for Cold War, but I'm sure that's coming on at a later date as well. So uh, it's very important to mention that how uh, these maps are also some of them are for the large scale modes, which is for combined arms, which you'll see the maps of Armada, Crossroads, and Cartel being the 12v12, and then everything else having 6v6 versions as well. Now, I feel a lot of people within the Call of Duty community are not fully understanding the context of the content going into this game. You know, Treyarch took over Sledgehammer when it comes halfway through the development of Cold War. And then in the final year of development, you had a pandemic hit, which like, you know, they lost months worth of work. Halo Infinite basically got delayed because of uh, the current situation within the world. Can't say the name, but you know what I'm talking about. And so the fact that this game's even releasing and it's not a super bu super buggy mess because I have a chance to play the beta is quite a remarkable feat when you think about it. And also this game, Cold War, is going to be as a service much similar to Modern Warfare. In fact, maybe even a more of an emphasis on the post-launch content as we do know we're getting Nuketown a few weeks after the launch as well. Bump that map total up to nine, which then makes me think about, okay, how much content is needed for the launch of Halo Infinite? Launching of a Halo title has really been a bit of an issue, uh, really, honestly, ever since, ever since Halo Reach. I remember back when Halo Reach was released, uh, there was a big concern about the lack of dev maps and big emphasis on Forge maps. Halo 4's settings weren't exactly the best and had a quick player drop-off. And of course, the MCC's release, which uh, we all know about that story, and also a big complaint about the lack of content when it came to Halo 5. But I don't think it was really the lack of content within the Halo 5. It was the lack of expected features within a Halo game. I think people were more upset about when they say content. Because at the launch of Halo 5, you didn't have BTB, you didn't have Infection, and you didn't have Forge three major game modes that you expect to have at the launch of a Halo game. And also you didn't have split screen. You still don't have split screen within Halo 5. So I was reviewing some of the maps that were at launch for Halo 5, and it seems to be like we might be getting probably something like a similar total, but maybe even a little bit less possibly with the new content model that they have for Halo Infinite, which we'll go into later. Uh, so for Warzone, which was like their big mode that was supposed to be the game seller, uh, he had Ar Escape from Ark, Raiden Apex 7, Marcher and Stormbreak, and then he had the Assault versions, which are like, yeah, remixes in a way, but it's for a totally different game mode, and they did change a lot of things. So I do count them as their own maps as well, that are developer-made maps. They so had Dispatch, Array, and Summit. Then for the 4v4 stuff, for developer-made maps, you had Colosseum, Plaza, The Rig, Regret, Fathom, Eden, and Empire. Eden being a remix of Empire as well, which was a whole nother thing that they kind of Put a big emphasis on within Halo 5. And then for the Forge maps, you had Orion and Pegasus with five other ones attached to Breakout being Gamble, Trident, Trench, Crossfire, and Altitude. 
bringing your entire map total, including dev made and forge made maps to 20 maps at launch. 13 of those being dev maps, seven of those being forge. Now we did have monthly updates with Halo 5 to try to make it kind of like a game as a service, but the workflow for the engine just didn't quite match it. Uh, I think the analogy that fits well for this is like, you know, three for three, try fitting the square within the circle, if that kind of makes sense. Trying to make Halo 5 into like a pseudo live service kind of game for at least the first uh, year and a half, I believe, of of the launch of the game. So I think there's gonna be a big emphasis within Halo Infinite. We might actually have a smaller map pool when it comes to the game. Now we don't understand everything that's gonna be coming with the game right now. Uh, we don't know about like BTB. We, we barely, we barely. The only thing we know about the multiplayer is that it's 120 FPS and it's free to play. There have been leaks and rumors about the different game modes and things like that coming to the game, like a battle royale and a large scale 45 versus 45 kind of mode. Uh, though I expect the launch of Halo Infinite to be very concise. I think what they need to do is kind of focus on the parts that they absolutely need for a good launch of the game. That's the biggest part I think Halo Infinite really needs and the Halo community really needs as well as a solid launch. That's why they delayed the game. Given the prior history 343 has had with launches of Halo titles, uh, this one really needs to kind of, you know, hit home and just give us exactly what we want, which is like, you know, having the 4v4, having the BTB, Forge, Infection, and various other modes within the community and various features that we come to expect within a Halo game. Though right now, you can't exactly put a number on how many maps is appropriate amount of maps for Halo Infinite. For 4v4, we can probably put a solid guess though, say at least five maps at launch. And probably if you have some large scale like BTB modes, probably three maps on those. And then obviously you want your forge canvases as well. I think you'd want at least three different forge canvases with each one having their own set pieces as well. My assumption that Halo Infinite is gonna have a big game seller of a mode that we don't know yet. We, because every Halo since, uh, really Halo 3 and Halo Reach, especially with Invasion, has had like the big stellar game mode or the big new feature that make people want to jump in and buy Halo. This kind of goes into that exact discussion about Battle Royale. I think a lot of people actually would enjoy a Battle Royale within Halo. Most people have the concern that it would take away dev time and resources for developing the other aspects of the game that are much more necessary for a good Halo game. So I would expect the launch of Halo Infinite to maybe be a little bit light on content when it comes to maps pool, but just because of obviously of the pressure of trying to get this game out within a reasonable amount of time, the new model of Halo as a platform. And so then you're gonna have seasons and probably each season's gonna be bringing in new maps, new content, new customization and things like that. Uh, so you gotta think long-term when it comes to Halo Infinite not going to be such a big emphasis on the launch as it's going to be the continued support after the game's release. And with the rumors of Halo Infinite's Forge being the best it has ever been, it does give me a lot of hope that they could possibly rely on Forge to kind of fill in the gaps of content that you could play. So obviously, Forge maps may struggle to reach the same level of polish and uniqueness that a developer-made map can make. Though, of course, ultimately, this delay of Halo Infinite could just give us all the content we could ever want for a Halo game, which could be very possible as well. We still have a lot to know about Halo Infinite before its launch. And I guarantee you, I will let you know as soon as this news breaks about more Halo Infinite stuff, I'll let you know on this channel, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you missed any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.